Good morning. Good morning, Allison. How are you today? Oh, you know, I'm good. I'm tired. Um, I'll tell you about that in a minute. But uh, how, how are you? I'm good. Tired. But I got my yeah. coffee. Ready to go. <laughs> yeah. So you mentioned um, to me earlier something about that yeah. you have coffee. And I would really like to hear about your new coffee. And I think the I, hopefully we have, hopefully we're, I know we have a delay, so I want to make sure everyone can hear about your coffee. Oh, Tara's okay, good morning, Tara. Tara. Hey, Tara. Um, well, my doctor told me I should not be drinking coffee because, oh. like, which is like the worst news in the world. Like, I, <laughs> what? Um, so that's just you not anything out of your diet. Any one thing do you have to cut out of your diet? That's the one you don't want to. That is just, I'm like, mm, no, uh uh. So I've been like searching for some alternatives, some other answers. And I found this coffee. It's called Four Sigmatic. It's made with mushroom. I mean, it's Arabica coffee, but it's also got prebiotics and probiotics. And but it's got a lot of mushroom in it. And if you know me, I hate mushrooms. I absolutely hate mushrooms. I think they're really gross and disgusting. But this doesn't taste like mushrooms. It tastes, <laughs> it tastes like coffee. My mom actually will make special dishes. She'll make two versions of it. One for me with no mushrooms. One for the rest of the family with mushrooms. Um, but um, this has got mushrooms, so it's a lot less acidic. So it's easier on your stomach. Um, and it is really good. It's like it's the smoothest coffee I've ever had. Like I can't even, I don't even know how else to describe it except for it's just really smooth. It's, it's That's like I said, coffee. it's got a wonderful flavor, but it just, I Tara, I would be interested to know what kind your cousin drinks because I'm all for trying out alternatives, but the one I've tried is it's from Four Sigmatic and I don't like the price. Like it's kind of expensive, but, um, it tastes wonderful. And if I've got to cut myself down to like one cup a day, which is just ridiculous too. What, what, um, one, uh, one cup a day. Is that <laughs> right. What I'm that? <laughs> right. Yeah. But, uh, well, that's exciting. I really, I was, you had mentioned that you were going to try that like a while ago. So I was really mm -hmm. eager about it. I'm glad to hear that it is extra smooth and that, that makes sense. And I don't really, I don't like the acidity in coffee and like different brands of coffee and different roasts and everything. Some are more acidic than others. And I usually stay away from the super acidic ones anyhow. So I can yeah. imagine maybe, maybe I would like mushroom coffee. This, and I, I will say I, I've noticed a difference on my stomach, like my stomach. Awesome. Yeah. So it's, I highly recommend it. It's very good. And I was a little leery. I'm like, mushroom coffee? Like, really? What does that? What does it really taste like? It tastes like coffee, so it's great. That's impressive. I, I'm interested in trying it. Like, I may even just bite the bullet, price wise, <laughs> because I, I mean, I like trying new things. Exactly. Um, Every once in a while, it's okay. <laughs> right. And I would, I also like to like watch, like, hey, Liz. I'd also like to like watch a video of how they make that too. Right. Yeah. <laughs> just what goes into that. Um, I'm having my. This morning I'm having, I already had coffee earlier. <laughs> and so I'm having um, some decaf now, but with the mocha, with the Ooh, yeah. chocolate powder and stuff. But, but I'm having it in this mug that is, whoops, from the Poor House Cafe, which, ugh, turn it right, um, was across the street from the library where I used to work. And okay. that, is, that is something I do miss about my current location. If I worked at, my, at our main branch, that would be one thing because I would be, I would have one full coffee options, but, no shade to the gas station or to Wendy's. <laughs> coffee. Yeah. And if you need it, it's there. But um, it was very nice to just go walk across the street and get, uh, you know, yeah, some real co coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we're talking about, like, the mocha and the hot chocolate. Mm -hmm. I, I do believe this company makes mushroom-based other items. Mm -hmm. like you. Okay, yeah. cool. I'll look yeah. into that just for fun. I mean, it couldn't hurt. And I'm sure that long term, probably the quantity of coffee that I consume may not be. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. Yeah, so I had a lot this morning because I woke up at like 2.30 and you're going to know 
as soon as I, you already know probably because I you know my past. history yeah. at, at my house. Um, to a raccoon sound. <laughs> and if you're not the type, if you don't live a life in which you've been harassed by raccoons, you may not know the sound a raccoon makes, but they make many sounds. But, but one of them is like a screeching sound that um, you can YouTube it. And, and apparently people even compare it to like a screech owl. It's just, it's a very, it's a screech. And um, the comments in the YouTube video were all like, oh, thanks for letting me know what's happening outside my house at 3 a.m. And that, that's what's happening outside my house at 3 a.m. Um, You're so lucky. <laughs> I, I know. Lucky is definitely the word I used when I woke up. And so I don't, I don't know why they have to yell all the time, why they have to like announce themselves the way that they do, but they get on this part of my roof that is near my window. And so I hear them out there. And so it wakes me up and then I'm up and it's just very, it's hard to go back to sleep, especially when you're annoyed. Yes. It's not my fault for being annoyed, but I am annoyed. Um, and so then I went out there this morning to water the plants and stuff. And there's like, one of my bags of topsoil has been ripped open. Um, one of my potato buckets has been dug through. Um, my corn, I have also have corn, has been like, some of the leaves have been like shredded. They're on the ground. And then I have onions. And the onions haven't been doing great because of something about how I planted them. They didn't have enough sun. It's fine. Yeah. But I had a few that were looking good. And the ones that were looking good had just been pulled out of the ground. And like... I would, again, I'd be annoyed no matter what, but it doesn't even eat them. It just pulls yeah. them out. Like it'd be one thing, like a squirrel, it like pulls out my bulb in the fall and I'm like, well, it's preparing for winter. It's eating it, whatever. But maybe yeah. it's noon, they just- Just make it a Yeah, just being That's a jerk. rude. I know, it's really, really rude. Hello. Hi, Cindy. Hi, That's my How mom. <laughs> <laughs> Um, how's, how's the garden going? Um, otherwise, despite being furious at the raccoon, the garden's going okay. It had a rough, it had a rough start because of the weather. I think yeah. a lot of the issue, like things I have, I don't, I don't have any ripe tomatoes yet. I believe I'll have some, but some of my plants I think got waterlogged in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Um, stuff like that. At least at my house at Northwest, our garden is looking pretty good. Um, I mean, it also got battered in the beginning, but now things are really, finally we're getting color and stuff like that and vegetables. What about you at your house, Leah? Um, I was, I was late getting stuff into the ground. I'll admit that. Um, but it, it's doing well. Oh. Like flowers I planted on the one side of my house, they were looking great. Um, I had planted some, some seeds for some other stuff and that's not coming up. But um, the plants that I actually planted, like the plant plant, those yes. are the plant. In, in the back, I had some plants that, um, um, like I said, I was late. So they're plants that are supposed to bloom through fall. So I was like, okay, mm -hmm. it'll work. Yeah. They're doing wonderful. The one I really thought I had killed before I got it into the ground, because it took me a couple of days to get it into the ground. And I was like, oh, this one's not going to make it. But it's doing fabulous now. Right. In the back, I planted some seeds. And those, those, you know, they're like three or four inches tall now. I don't have flowers from them yet, but they're growing. And they're supposed to be plants yeah. in the fall. So hopefully... I'll have some more. Color. We have like a very long growing season. It stays yeah. Yeah. warm for quite a long time. And maybe we might get like a really early frost or something. But for the most part, it stays warm for a while. And in the front, I've got this one salvia plant that is just ginormous. Like it got so big, like it can't hold itself up. So like we had had these really heavy rains one day and like the way the rain on the big plant, it kind of like fell over and I was like, well, what do I do with that well it just before I could do anything you like it fell over and then started growing up so oh it's, it's, it's doing its own thing and it's it great and I planted and then I've got another salvia bush that's doing okay you know it's not as big it's not it's not <laughs> nearly as big but it's it's growing and then the other one um died and it was it wasn't doing great and then my dog fell off my porch um my dog has dementia and he like doesn't understand how to back up anymore he can only go forward 
it's it's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Like he's completely forgotten how to back up. He can't do it. He gets stuck in corners. It's it's really sad. But he had walked forward on the porch and kind of like walked between the the posts on the porch. And I saw him because I was pulling weeds. And I pushed him back onto the porch. And then I rolled up onto the porch so I could put him back in the house. And while I was coming up the steps, he went forward again and just kept going. And face first into the plant that wasn't doing what to start with. So now that is. I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry he came back up either. Yeah, but I just, I, I don't understand that whole, that backup function is something that he has lost. He's lost. Yeah. Well, speaking of gardens and things getting somewhat out of control, we do have, um, at Northwest, we planted a we planted a fairy tale garden basically um, because yeah. the summer reading theme is you know fairy folk fairy tales basically, um, and so we planted different beds that are um, that that had some kind of connection to a fairy tale, yeah. and we plan on doing programming based around them, which sadly we can't do anymore. But the things are still growing. Um, we still have the garden out there and the stuff is still growing. So it's up to me basically to enjoy it. Um, and those of us who work there, but we have, we planted these, I don't know if you can see, these are called dragon tongue beans and they're like yellow with purple stripes. Those it's, are really cool. more impressive in person probably than on camera. Um, but we have like a little nest of these out there now and they're supposedly like green beans. Um, and it's weird though, like I might be making it up but I feel like they have a weird texture. And so I think I'm pretending that they have the texture of a dragon's tongue. Um, exactly right. kind of sticky or, or something. <laughs> um, but apparently they're just like green beans and you can just cook them like that or eat them raw. And I definitely wanted to try this, but I wanted to show it on here first. And now I still want to try it. And I don't want this to devolve into a show where we just eat weird things on camera. I feel like like fear factor or something. Yeah. It's just I just I still wanted to try it though, so I think I might. Um... Oh, it's good. Okay, it's good. Regular. But now you can tell people you've had dragon's tongue, and they'll be like, I know. Where did you get that? Yeah. And I guess when you cook them, um, the purple actually goes away. The purple streaks go away, and oh. um, and they just turn yellow. That's so. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's another magical bit about it. So in that bed, we have these dragon tongue beans. We also have um, dragon's egg cucumbers, which just end up being like round and smooth and whitish. Oh, cool. <laughs> um, and then we also planted snapdragons. So that's like our dragon bed. Um, we had plans. For, yeah, we had plans for a Rapunzel uh, mm -hmm. bed area because um, in the original story, the reason why Rapunzel is captured is because um, the mom has this craving for this vegetable that is like a radish, but it's not a radish. Um, it grows in Europe and it's different, but it's like that. And so the husband like climbs over this fence and like gets them from the garden of the witch or whatever. Right. And um, so the thing that they actually crave in the real story is like invasive and not native to here. So we can't grow that. Um, right. But radishes are the most similar thing. So we were planning that bed and we were going to have, you know, like Rapunzel's hair coming out of the bed, <laughs> you know, like a little thing. Yeah. We had all yeah. these plans and these programs we were going to do, but. And then, you know, COVID. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but if you do make your way out there, you can still appreciate some of what we've done and what the ground squirrels haven't eaten because we do also have a rambunctious crew of ground squirrels that live at <laughs> and they eat very well off of the things I tried to plant. So right. I have more trouble with the neighborhood. Um, there, we have a whole bunch of stray cats in our neighborhood and they think that the mulch is a good place to, to go to the bathroom. I have, but luckily they, I have dogs, so they don't come over too often. Um, the dogs kind of, I let them all around the yard and they keep the cats away. Mostly, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Out there are adorable, though. They are super cute. They're really, really cute. We actually, a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> um, <laughs> spoiling the end of the story, but we got one in the building, um, in the garage. <laughs> we got into the garage, and we were hearing this peeping sound. It, at first, it honestly sounded like a smoke detector. 
battery warning because oh, yeah. it's just a high pitch like squeaking thing but then it kind of became less regular and so we tried we, we spent time trying to track it down and we finally thought well there must be a bird in the garage and so we're standing there and we're looking around what we keep just looking up here for a bird right. and then finally exactly. one of my trips in there i glance down and i see like this little bushy tail run by and apparently they chirp apparently ground squirrels chirp and it was just playing in there it was running around and i opened the garage door and i'm like you're free. And it didn't seem to want to be free. It just wanted to keep playing. <laughs> <laughs> you have so many animal stories from Northwest. I know. And so we left the door open for a little while and it did run out. So, but we, I mean, when you think about it, we, I mean, we live, we, we live, we work in we a, just like a field, you know, in a field next to a swamp kind of or a bog or whatever that area is. And so it makes sense. We have so many creatures, but um, it's an uphill battle to just keep our space versus their space. <laughs> <laughs> there was the snake you found this year, right? The snake, the squirrel. The... We did find a snake. That was <laughs> alarming. <laughs> raccoon that Ate the power wire. wire. Yeah, the power wire. Yeah, and the snake was definitely um, that was really a shock. And yeah, thanks to Tara. What? It was small. It right? was very small. It was. I mean, it was very small. Um, but <laughs> just when you see a snake where you're not expecting to see a snake, i.e., at work indoors, it's alarming. It's <laughs> yeah. Thankfully, Tara was there. A baby animal in your mulch? Did I hear that? Was that last year? I don't know. We had a dead animal in our mulch this year. Oh, okay. Oh. It like, so like packed in the mulch. So like when they spread the mulch, it was like based on its condition. We think it came with the mulch. And okay. in fact, yesterday morning, we had a bird hit the window uh, and not not make it out of that. So. Oh, that's sad I, because you have so many birds at your house. Yeah. At, at your house. Listen to me now I'm calling it your house. Um, at your location, your library location. I love sitting out in the gazebo and watching the birds. Like I know. I love when I have an excuse to go to your branch because it's just I, with the garden and the birds, it's just, it's, it's a beautiful place to, it, to visit. It really is, but it is the circle of life there uh, we have discovered. <laughs> <laughs> the full circle. We also, we had these really, Tara would know she, if she's watching. We had these, um, we had these, this bird's nest in a bush. So you could like look down it and see it. And the birds were so, 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 so tiny. They were so tiny. It was just their little mouths open, but you could just like look right down in and see them because they were basically at eye level. And, um, and so that was really fun. And then we got to see them fledge and then they hopped around in the, in the beds. And then we still see what we assume are those birds, you know, hanging out. So it's an interesting, it, I guess it makes up for not having coffee across the street. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think that's a good trade off. Yeah. It's a fair trade off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can always make coffee in the back, you know, it might not be yeah. the same as having someone else. Make right. Uh, right. Um, but it's, what else makes for you is almost always 10 times better. It's what? always better. Why is that? I don't know. I could, it could be the exact same thing, the exact same amount of coffee, the exact same amount of water, amount of water, the exact same pot. But if someone else is doing it, it tastes better. <laughs> take a moment to mourn the fact that we each made our own coffee this morning. <laughs> Very sad. <laughs> Have you been doing anything else in your? Um, I've uh, not really. I'm I, I, <laughs> I'm just boring. What about you? You're yeah. Really well, we're kind of we're kind of in this lull where yeah. so much is happening with the virus and so little is happening outside of the virus. It's so um, weird. Yeah. Like this year. Yeah. Weird. yeah. <laughs> Or doing anything it's very odd yeah so I started doing a crossword last night this is very nice uh story my brother I really like crossword puzzles a lot and I do them with my family um sometimes mm -hmm. when we're all in town we'll all work because it's usually a weekend so we'll do one over the weekend um and I had gone to the 
store on Sunday to get a New York Times because I wanted, I was just kind of jonesing for the crossword. And they also had, um, I knew they had these fiction stories in their magazine that I kind of wanted to read. And I went and the thing that the magazine that the crossword is in, they had one New York Times, but it didn't have that magazine in it. So I was like, I was bummed. And I told my brother about it um, because he gets the Sunday Times delivered uh, where he lives. And so um, I know he always does the puzzle. And to, yesterday when I got home, I had an envelope in the mail and he sent it to me. He didn't do it. He sent me the magazine. And uh, so I could do the puzzle, which was so nice. So I've been working on that. Um, I just, it's its like the perfect relaxation thing for my brain. I have to think pretty pretty hard, if we're being honest. Um, but, but like in a different way than having to think about anything else, you know? So I was working on that. I was even working on that before we started our, our thing. Um, Cause sometimes, you know, you look at stuff and you don't see it. And then all of a sudden you look at it and yeah, you know the answer. So I, I really enjoy puzzles. Do you do anything like that in your free time? I, I do. Um, I'm one of those people. I don't like if I'm sitting and watching a movie, like I can focus on the movie, but I don't, I feel like I need to be doing something else. So most often I will sit and do like Sudoku puzzles. I love those. Um, I, I would love to do crossword puzzles. I'm really not smart enough. Um, <laughs> I don't know actors' names from like back in the day or rivers in, in Europe. Like I, I, I don't know that information. It's, it's not there. So I, I go back and forth with, I can do easy crossword puzzles, but not not difficult, not New yeah. York Times Sunday crossword puzzles. Um, I do love the puzzles and I forget what they're even called. They look like crossword puzzles. They've got that same box grid and the weird shapes. Um, but instead of like clues across and down, you get numbers like three digit numbers and four digit numbers and five digit numbers and six digit numbers. And you fill those in in the crossword puzzle area. Mm -hmm. I love doing those. It like, a lot of people get turned off on them because they're like, oh my God, numbers. I can't do that. Um, yeah. Oh, Scott loves Sudoku too. Like Sudoku, I just, I love. Like the ones yeah. that, it's just, it, it makes, I love those. But the the ones that look like crossword puzzles, but you fill in the yeah. numbers. Those have always intimidated me. And I don't know that it's the number thing. It's that what I like about crosswords is that they're, I know there's a right answer. I don't like having to guess. I don't like having to put something in and be like, does this work? And and that's and that intimidates me about the number one because I'm like, what if I do one wrong and then I can't figure out which one I did wrong? But I should probably just try it sometime. I you should. should. Our process of elimination, you can usually get it down to like two, yeah. and then looking at figure it out. Yeah, yeah you can figure it out. It just yeah. it's really not difficult. I just I really like those ones though. Yes. Does that's anyone else, any of our viewers have puzzle recommendations? Because at this point, virus wise. I think it might be smart to uh, to pick so, up a new solitary hobby, <laughs> an indoor solitary hobby. Um, <laughs> Although crossword puzzles don't have to be solitary, you can be no, like hey, seven letter word for solitude. Yes. Like, and that's the thing, right? <laughs> that's the thing that like that's why I like doing them with my family because we we bring. It's especially good if you do it with a group of people. Of different like generations or backgrounds because they can bring stuff in. I never know anything about geography, so my brother he's always the one you know that like the, this river, this capital, this whatever. Um, my parents, of course, you know are older, so they have a better handle on some of the stuff you know that I don't know about or you know. So it's fun. Um, or sometimes my brother will even send me when he's doing them. He'll send me like like a clue or whatever, and like what do you think about this? And so they are fun to do together, and you don't have to be in the same place. You can do that remotely too. So. Cool. And Liz says there's a an app called Puzzle Page that has bunches of puzzles every day. I actually have a coffee cup um, that has a, a, um, um, a crossword puzzle board on it. And there's a website you go to and every day there's a puzzle that fits that board. Are you so, serious? Mm -hmm. That is awesome. You yeah. have that mug near, not, I know you don't have it nearby now, but like you should bring it on the show sometime. I should. I should. I should. Should have thought of that. Yeah. Oh. I was, no, yeah. Other. Bring it on the show sometime. I'm envious of your mug. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so that that was really fun to do. Otherwise, we should pick some books to talk about next week or something. Oh, yeah. I keep thinking, um, Crossword, yeah. Picture Puzzles, Sudoku, and Killer Sudoku. Ooh, Killer Sudoku, that sounds scary. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> some of the really hard Sudoku yeah. puzzles, I'm just like, this isn't fun anymore. I'm not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> I I quit because it's not fair. <laughs> I uh I really do like Sudoku and some of the some of the ones that are labeled hard. I'm like, why is this hard? This one was so yeah. Easy. And then you'll do like one that's like only like medium, and I'm like, I can't figure it out. I every well, once in a while. Yeah, and I I do think that those are fine, but I do also some sometimes you get like you work yourself into a corner and you don't know how to untangle it. Yeah. Um. This. This mag this magazine that I was doing my thing in also has this puzzle called Diagramless, which is basically a crossword, but it has no black squares in it. I don't really know how you do that one, but that seems intimidating as well. I don't know. It has a direction. It has directions with it. It says it has an asymmetrical pattern. I don't know what that means. I if I don't understand the directions to the puzzle, I probably have an actual puzzle. Yeah, yeah, I think that's worth worth skipping if 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 you don't know yeah. if you can't understand the instructions, you can't do the puzzle. More like math. Yeah, and I do think Liz, yeah, Liz here is saying you have a grid. There are other boxes where you have to add a certain number. And I want to point out that Liz has um like an accounting degree, so her perspective on what is fun in the math world may be different than what. <clears throat> I wonder if Liz does the ones that look like crossword puzzles, but you fill in the numbers. I like those. Maybe. Yeah, Liz, <laughs> let us know. Um, speaking of numbers, but slightly off topic, but on topic because it's the library. Um, I I sent, um, Leah, I sent you that number for that, do that Dewey Decimal number for that book a couple of weeks ago where the number mm -hmm. was like 12 digits long yes. yeah. or something like that. And um, so maybe next week we can talk some about Dewey Decimal stuff because I think that is kind of fun. I think I, that would be really interesting. If our viewers think that that might be fun, um, let us know because it is, there's so much more to it than people may think for one. And then also like, um, you know, how you determine numbers and stuff, but also like there's, there's committees and there's a process for proposing new numbers and all these things. And so like right now they have a new a proposal going for a different number for fermentation. And um, because right now the, where the number is doesn't really account for like fermented, like recipes for fermented foods because fermentation is like a chemical process and it's in like the 660s, but would they want a number in the 640, 1.5, so you can have like fermentation cookbook recipes. And so, but that's like a committee came up with that. They had to write the proposal, they had to submit it, it has to be approved. And if I didn't work in a library, I would not know that that had to happen. Exactly. And Liz wants to know if she can quiz us. Ooh. Um, maybe yeah. next week when we have had time to prepare. Right? Yeah. Like there are some Actually, that you just know, and then some that you're just like, I have no idea where that goes. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting. Yeah. And I can get and, close enough that I can get to the shelving area to find the books. I can scan and find what I need. I can get myself close, but I don't always know exactly the right number, you know, but yeah. Yeah. I think well, she can Stump the librarians. <laughs> right. Maybe we can do some of that. We can do some of that next week. Uh, bring your bring your question and see if we know where the book would go, which is my job. So I know it's gonna sound like if I don't know, I'm gonna sound bad, but I don't But it's four volumes of books that you have. I just don't have it here. I'm gonna prove it again. Uh, four volumes. Yeah. Four of these. I can't memorize all that. And plus it changes. Uh, travel books are in like more like the nine tens. Um, 909 is, is that like where the Titanic goes? Like uh, the 909s tend to be like world history without a um, specific location. So I think 909 is where you'll find like books, the year 1044, what was happening in the world in the year 1044 or whatever. Yeah. And then the Titanic books are in the nine tens, I believe, because that's the ex or the ship 
the disasters, um, yeah. the ship travel or whatever. Okay. And then, yeah. And then and the like in the teens is where you find like different travel location information. So, yeah, which is one of those areas that can be hard. The travel, travel wish books can be hard to categorize sometimes because sometimes it's just sort of like a memoir. Sometimes it's like yeah. travel, sometimes it's cultural about that place. Mm -hmm. And it can be hard to figure out the best place to put those things. So we try to keep those nine, nine, one, whatever numbers, um, kind of more for like, if you're traveling somewhere, here's information you might need so that it, that we don't clutter it with stuff <laughs> that wouldn't be helpful if you're traveling to that place. Yeah. Nerd alert. Yeah. Well, okay. You're, you're in good company, Liz. <laughs> right. Exactly. Well, maybe yeah. we can talk about that next week. Um, and if anyone has, um, yeah, like suggestions or things you might be interested in, leave them in the comments and we'll, we'll do that. It's just been kind of a, a uh, busy week at the library with us transitioning back and, and yeah, it was kind of a long one. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Lots of changes this week. So yeah, definitely. All right. Well, we are at our time. Yeah. We'll let you go and hopefully we'll see you back here again next Friday at 1030. Next Friday at 1030. We'll talk about three decimal numbers, some new books probably and uh yeah so nerd alert in advance <laughs> <laughs> all right bye next friday allison yeah yeah